Okay, well, we're recording, so. Okay. I can't say no wordy nerves now. Wordy nerves. Don't let out any secrets about good fishing places. I share my good fishing places. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me call this meeting to order. We'll do the preliminaries and Ms. Carmel will be with us momentarily. This is the August meeting for the Valley Flash County Zoning Board of Appeals. For those of you that have never been here, let me explain how we operate, seeing we only have one person here to be quick. <laughs> I will call each case by case name and case number. Staff will come to the lectern. They will give us the meat of the request. Once they have presented it, there will probably be discussions among the board members and back and forth with the staff. Once we have heard the case and feel like we understand that side of it, then I will ask if there are any persons here representing or with the person or firm that is asking for the request. If you would like to come to the lectern and give us additional information, you, that is your prerogative. Give us your name and address, please, for the record. Give us the information you would like us to take under advisement. After you have presented it or during your presentation, there probably will be questions and or discussions, again, between board members and you or back and forth. Once we have heard that side and feel like we understand it, then I will ask if there are any persons here in opposition or if there are any persons here that have a question about what is being requested. Once we have heard both sides, we normally will reach a decision here today. However, if the board feels like that party parties need to talk or information is lacking, we do have the right in the bylaws to postpone action until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Okay, after saying that, Ms. Carmella, you have the floor. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Our one and only case today. Well, uh, our first case is a variance request by Mr. Daniel Frederick, who represents Bapor Great Bay, um, the Isaiah Commons development. And back in 2013, this property, first of all, this property is located off of Aldero. Thank you, Tracy. Um, the rezoning for this property occurred um, in 2013. Um, the project is proposed to have a total of 172 units, um, but the first phase, which is what you're looking at, well, half of what you, you're looking at there, um, is going to consist of, of about 90 units. Um, as part of them prepping the property for development, um, the county, with the adoption of the UOVC in 2006, developed a regulation for tree protection, tree removal, um, which is something we weren't really accustomed to doing prior to 2006. But one of the requirements for true removal or mass grading is that you have to replace um, the inches with whatever you cut, cut down. And in this case, they cut a total of 2,000, um, 2,192 inches worth of you know, specimen type trees. Um, and the county has a one-to-one -one ratio, whatever you cut down, that's what you have to replace. In this case, they are proposing to go back with 1,149 inches, so they're requesting the variance um, uh, for the difference. The TRC looked at this request. Um, the county engineer was just very adamant about, you know, the conversation he had with the development team um, in that they would have to do the one-to-one -one ratio. Um, so with that, the TRC looked at this and recommends a 20% relief rather than what they're requesting. Um, and we do that because on cases involving setbacks, staff is, is 
um, able to provide 20% relief. Anything more than that, you know, that's something you all will be looking at. So in this case, staff is recommending a 20% a relief, which works out to being um, a relief of 438 inches, um, and the applicant will be required to go back to 1754, 1,754 inches worth of trees. Um, and looking at the development site, um, I discussed this with the engineer to see if that was even possible, because in the applicant's letter of intent, you know, they um, state that, you know, they don't have room to put that much, but in looking at the drawing, they can plant within the detention area. Um, there's some areas between where the community center is in the rear of the houses. There's some areas there they can provide a nice buffer for. So we see where they have room to, to plant. But I'll let the applicant you know, talk about his hardship. Um, we really didn't see any. We thought it was self-imposed. Um, so with that, we're recommending a 20% relief. Okay. And the meeting with the owner where these trees and all were discussed was before they cut any, before they turned any dirt. Yes, yes sir. Any questions, any discussions? Yes. Um, Carmela, it's, was it my understanding that you said that after they came and asked for relief that y'all went back and talked to the engineer and the engineer came back again and said no, they needed to be the one-to-one -one ratio? Or was that just prior to? It was prior to. Okay. And I have a question about the one-to-one -one requirement. Is that only in a PD or is that in any place where any development? That's in any, any place. And it's something fairly new to us, um, the county. Um, and unlike the city, we don't have anything like a true bank, you know, where you can go back and, you know, contribute that to we don't have any, any of that in place right now. Okay, and I did not go and try to find it in the ULDC to read it. Is there anything in there that the bigger the project that maybe there's a little more leeway in it, or is it if it's a five home subdivision or a hundred home subdivision or three hundred home subdivision, it's one for one. Um, with the exception of the family farms, um, they're not required. But whenever you have a land disturbance activity, right. such as a subdivision or a commercial development, then that one to one counts. Okay. Any other questions? Any other discussions from the board at this time? I have one more. I'm sorry. Is the 20% recommendation, relief recommendation that y'all are giving? just based on you can or you feel like it should be? We're, we we don't have the ability to do that, but we use that 20% as a guide because we're able to give that relief in setbacks, in, in the case of a setback. We can relieve 20% of a setback. So we kind of use that as just a guide. Oh. Oh. Have there ever been any other like situations or examples similar to this? Because um, I know there's a lot, a lot of other subdivisions that's been developed in the county areas. Are there any other examples? No, the only closest thing that comes to mind is Nelson Hill subdivision. Some of you all are familiar. Yeah, well, they so didn't have air trees back. No, we didn't have that requirement that before. Yeah. yeah, we didn't have that requirement. This, this is the first, I think. Yes, it is. Oh, it is. Um, what was this property zoned prior to rezoning? R1, which was a residential minimum one acre lot size. Okay, so even prior to this, it wasn't farmland that they could harvest the timber off of. They did harvest the timber prior, off of it. Prior to that, it was a uh, pine plantation, planting pines that had been under lease for a number of years. Okay. And that's a good question. Um, with Planet Pines, they just, that's a given to them. You know, they don't count, they count that towards harvesting. Um, so the pines that they did get rid of, that, that was something that was. But they didn't count. Right. Correct. Right. So 
So that was not part of the 2100. So it's tight. I mean, the development, it is tight. <laughs> um, but we just feel they could have done better. Any other questions? Any other discussions? Thank you. Thank you, Carmella. Okay. Are you with the firm? Yes, sir. Would you like to give sure. us any additional information? Or are you satisfied with what you presented? Or yeah, I'll, I'll give you a little bit more info. Okay. If I can. can I get your name and address for the record? Sure. Name is Dan Frederick. Um, my address is 5170 Avenue Circle in AIR. So I live locally. Um, thank you for hearing me this afternoon. Um, just wanted to bring, and thank you, Carmel, for that. I appreciate it. Um, she was very helpful to me throughout this whole process, so wouldn't be here without her. <laughs> um, a couple of points that I wanted to make. Um, we looked at this, and going back to pre-land uh, clearing discussions, I can't speak to that. I wasn't a part of that. Uh, I came on after the fact. The only thing I could probably say is that um, while the requirement is there, it's possible that it just wasn't looked into deeply enough at that point. Um, that one for one requirement, um, I completely understand why it's there. My perspective is I just don't want to plant a bunch of trees back um, in the event that a lot of them die off just to meet that requirement. Um, not to say that that would happen, but we got with our civil engineer. We have a civil engineer dedicated to this project. Um, what they kind of drew up for guidelines for me uh, and this site plan. All those trees um, noted within the circles on that site plan are in addition to the landscape package that we have um, as our approved plans with Moody Air Force Base. This is all, if you didn't know, um, housing geared towards Air Force uh, Air and their families. So a couple of um, limitations that our civil engineer noted when he drew up this site plan were uh, no trees that would conflict with any utility lines. Um, well, basically within 10 foot of the utility line. No trees between the sidewalk and street to prevent future fracking and stuff like that in concrete, obviously. Um, no trees inside the ATFP setback for the community center. That community center, um, these deals are put together based off of um, a lot of anti terrorism force protection standards in conjunction with uh, the Air Force privatization. And we've got to maintain a minimum distance uh, around that community center, safe distance, depending on where it is in the development. So that's something that we basically a lot of for no trees inside that setback. I believe it's, I think it's 50 foot all the way around, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the reason for not putting trees uh, around the community center on the site. Um, no trees in the detention basins. That's just something we typically do. I'm not sure if that's common practice um, in this area, but we typically do not put trees in our detention basins in our developments throughout the country. Um, you're talking about actually down in the depression, or are you talking Correct. about within the perimeter up on the burn? Pretty much within the perimeter, because uh, we'll have security fencing around these. We typically don't put anything, um, we'll spray a natural mix of vegetation and stuff like that for growth, but we typically don't plant trees around the perimeter. Our fence will be pretty tight to that um, detention basin perimeter. Um, we didn't allow for any trees in the open play area of the community center. We've got sports fields, um, playgrounds, and um, some rec areas that are slated to go in around the community center area. So we didn't put any trees within those areas. Um, and no trees installed in a greater than four to one slope, which probably would be most of our detention areas. So a couple of things I just wanted to note, which is how our civil engineer came up with this site plan. Um, I completely understand the need and the reasoning for the requirement. I just didn't want to run into a situation where a couple of years down the road we're pulling, you know, a bunch of trees out that just didn't make it. Right, based on your revised drawing or the civil engineer's revised drawing, how many inches is he showing? He is showing one thousand one hundred and 49, so it's roughly a 50% reduction in the one for one requirement based on four inches. And that's after after this came to light when he went in and tried to find more trees to put it in. That's correct. This is not part of the original site plan. Correct. So the original site plan had zero trees. 
speak of. We, we do have a lot of the existing, um, I say a lot, I mean, we have a lot of impervious surface between the, the buildings themselves, the roads, the sidewalks, all that stuff. Um, we do have a lot of protected wetlands, that big stretch going uh, northeast, that's all protected wetlands. So that's all trees. Um, we do have some areas of protected trees kind of scattered throughout the community. Um, I think this is a pretty unique development for this area, just given the fact that we're basically coming in and building all the homes at one time. Just from driving around town and spending a little bit of time here, it's typically from what I see is lot by lot construction. Um, so I'm not sure if it was clearly looked at at that point. I know criminals said the discussions had taken place before we actually started clearing land. Um, I, just, I can't speak to, to that personally. I just wasn't involved in that. Okay. What is the plan for this is phase one? What is the plan timetable for phase two? I'm glad you brought that up, actually. Um, there is no timetable right now for phase two. Phase two was an original concept, I believe. So our deal right now with the Air Force, uh, with Moody Air Force Base, is we have to build 101 homes. Uh, anything outside of that would have to be in addition to the current scope of the development work. So I know conceptually, early on, um, there was thought for discussions about building more homes, I think it was 182, if I'm not mistaken. But this is what we've got today, and for our purposes here, there is no phase two at this point. Uh, I'm doing a lot of talking. Anybody? Okay, I have a question about the types of trees that you're going to plant. It says the total trees would be 192 more miles and 255 canopy trees. What kinds of trees do you imagine planting? Um, something that's pretty native to this area, we generally try to do. That's used to the climate, used to the weather conditions. Uh, what types of trees exactly, I'm not sure. Uh, we run that through the base environmental folks as well before we actually purchase any trees. For this particular case, probably the county we work with in identifying trees. Has the area for just phase one been clear cut? Yes. So phase two remains natural yes. in, in its original condition right now? Correct. This is the only land parcel that we bought, that we actually own. So phase two, um, I, I honestly have no idea what's going on with phase two. I just know at this point we don't own that land. Okay, so they didn't buy additional land. Correct. How are the others still in that range? Behind. So we'd have to go through the land acquisition process all over again if it were to be a phase two. And I think this has something to do with uh, the overall mission of the base. Now, the reason I was asking that question is, in the back of my mind, I was considering if phase two was definitely going to happen that we might consider increasing trees in phase two for the shortage in phase one, but if there's not going to be a phase two, at least at this point, even in anybody's dreams, then that's, that's not an option. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Yes, ma'am. I have a question for Carmella. Um, if I step up the caliper diameter of the trees that are installed, does that increase? amount of inches. If they buy larger trees to install from the beginning, they can make up for that shortage. They don't. So it's the area issue is no longer an issue. They just install larger trees. Okay. I actually did discuss that with our civil engineer and all we would need for larger to go with larger trees is the space available for growth. Uh, we, just, we just don't want to see trees dying off. Right? Our maintenance team will come in and operate and maintain this property. Um, our operations will be the management team. But hate to have them to see or have them have to take you know a bunch of dead trees. And we've actually seen that on other properties. And uh, that's really my main focus on trying to avoid any sort of dead trees, just making sure the trees have the distance and space that they need to thrive. But they have to be, if they die, they have to be replaced. Correct. So it, it wouldn't be, and, and I understand, you know. 
on one hand, you're saying that you don't want to have to come in and take out dead trees, but you would have to replace them. The, the purpose is to keep the trees there and alive. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's removing and replacing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and if you put in a tree, say a uh, sycamore tree, if you put it in and it's this big around, sycamore tree gets to be a big tree. Um, it, it'll grow, and it's a relatively fast growing tree, and it's a native tree. So they're gonna they're gonna get bigger. If you put a pine tree in and you put it in, it's this big now. Right. It's gonna get to be this big around. You have to have at least that much room to put any tree in. Any other questions? Any other discussions? I have a question for Carmel. Is it you can administratively give relief on setbacks, but not on this? So we could say 10% relief. Mm -hmm. right. we, we, could, we, could, we could pick any number, whatever. Or, or no relief. relief. Mm -hmm. No relief, okay. 10, 20, 30, 40, you know, whatever the board feels like is okay with the board, then it is wide open. Right. Our hands are not tied in any way. Like Car Carmelo said, it was, she just, staff just used the 20% because in setbacks there is an administrative variance that they can grant up to 20 percent and the applicant or the, the property owner developer doesn't have to come spend the money to come before us to ask for that unless they want more than that. anything else thank you sir thank you appreciate it Ladies and gentlemen, do we need to talk about it a little bit before I try to call a question, or y'all want to talk about percentages? Or can, can I just say this? And any conditions? I, I want to put a condition on. Okay, we're wide open. Mm -hmm. The only thing we have to be careful of as far as putting conditions is how hard is it going to be to enforce or to monitor. Keep in mind, in most cases, most of the conditions that we're dealing with generally end up being complaint-driven. I think that the condition that I want to make is going to be pretty clear. I don't want any palm trees. I don't want any eucalyptus. I want native to Georgia trees. The eucalyptus are GMO. They're fast-growing, but they don't belong here. And the same thing, okay. palm well, trees. I don't want any palm trees. Look at the palm trees in Nelson Hill. They look ridiculous. <laughs> I've got three palm trees in my room. Okay. When, when, well, I, I, when, lots of people have palm trees, when, but when if this is going to be beautiful, I don't want any palm trees in there. When it gets to be motion time, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you are so anti-Florida. If I'm not going to Florida, I had to move there. <laughs> As a member of the Florida Bar, I'm, I'm really offended. <laughs> okay, all right, let's, let's get back on task, folks. Let's get back on task. My concern is the size of the trees that are going in. I think that two and three inches are, they're too small. If you're looking at the ornamental trees, okay, if you put a crepe myrtle up there, it's going to grow quickly, but we need more than crepe myrtles. We need hardy, hard trees. We need elm. I think that oaks and... Yes. And I think that they should be larger. Yeah, I, I, I understand. And I much prefer to put in a larger tree. But keep in mind, at least it's been my experience, when you start getting into much, much larger trees, they are more prone to die out because of the transplant. Than the bigger the tree you transplant, correct. But the, the format of the tree, we need to have native trees that, that I, belong I, here. What do you think about olive trees? What kind? Most of the olive trees that are growing here are from California. Grand Tide California too? <laughs> Come on. Let's, let's fruit trees are great. I'm, yeah. I'm real good about fruit trees. You know, if you wanted to put in uh, ornamental fruit trees, that would be beautiful. Not not um, flowering pears, though. They're, they don't belong here. Okay. And they grow fast and they don't last long. Okay. Three. We go on. Anybody got any feeling? Staff has suggested 20% break, which will help them some. 
is going to be significantly more than they want to put in. I don't know how much hardship is going to be on them. I don't know whether they got room to put those in the John, trees. John had a question about percentage. What, what was that like? Yeah, um, yeah, I think we do at least discuss it amongst ourselves. Uh, their percentage uh, kind of meeting somewhere. Um, we can make a you know a decision that be good for all of us. Um, uh, one one thing I did think about it as well is uh, as far as Moody Air Force Base is concerned, do the uh, the residents of uh, Airmen and Moody Air Force Base do they have a choice whether to buy the house or not? Whether they just have to be housed there? It's a rental property. A rental property. So, I mean, if you have grown trees there that's not enticing for someone to move there, I think that would be, you know, bad on the developer's uh, behalf. So, of course, I think that... They don't have to live there. They have a choice. They do have they a choice. Live, exactly. Yeah, they can live anywhere else in town or on base or provided they meet the criteria for three or four bedroom home. But, yes. Okay, that's understandable. I mean, to me, I don't think it necessarily matters uh, what kind of trees. I mean, I think I would plant something there that would um, that would make someone want to stay there, you know, something nice. Um, I do believe in, you know, making Valdosta and Lyles kind of beautiful. I mean, if, if, if that's what helps, I, mean, I just don't think the, the tree itself matters what kind of tree, but we do have to, that's why I'm mostly on the percentage perspective of it all. What can we negotiate as far as the percentage? Are we going lower or are we going higher percentage? And I think that's what kind of where we're at right now. I don't think we're treating that. Yeah, and I, I just, from my perspective, I just want to make sure whatever we do plant, whatever that percentage is, um, everything just survives, has the opportunity to survive. That's that's really all I'm looking for. I know if I, because <laughs> my house, I have palm trees, and if, if it wasn't if it wasn't for <laughs> palm trees, I probably wouldn't bought it. You know, they're, they're, they're nice, you know. You know. And palm trees are fat, you get a lot of inches on palm trees. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's nice. I mean, I, I, I myself, like, so. <laughs> and keep in mind, this will, there's no confusion now. This is not a Moody Air Force Base government How? property housing situation. This right. is a private investor kind of thing. We're, we're not dealing with. United States government, the Department of Defense. We're dealing with investors, and that's part. Of, that's what's driving this. Is they don't want to put a dollar more in it than they have to, and I understand that. I don't blame them. But that's that's what this is. We we got to come up with a number in some format that the majority of the board can vote for, and then turn it over to them, and then it's up to them to figure out how to implement. It. The staff recommends. 20% reduction as a relief for them. I agree with that. I don't agree with going any deeper than that because their lack of research on what our rules that ULDC permits or does not, or they're um, thumbing their nose at it, whichever they did. We shouldn't be penalized. Our residents shouldn't be penalized for what we have in place and the regulations that we're trying to have for future. So I agree with the 20%, but I still would like to see bigger trees. They don't have to be you know, seven inches around, but I would like to see bigger trees and I would like to see more hardwoods than ornaments. What's the percentage it says 192 ornamentals and 255 canopies. Um, I suppose I can, this map, I can do that one. Two times. Yes, Carmel. If I may, I don't know whether the 20%, I didn't have a conversation with Mr. Daniel or his design team on whether the 20% was workable for them. I, I don't know if they don't want to entertain that. I have a quick question. Can you get a, a more in-depth picture of each lot, like focus in on the lot itself to see how many trees are in each lot? Um, Can we do that? Can we, you know, like open it up a little bit and see? We do have landscape plans per building. Um, typically, yeah, it's really, you can't really see where are all the trees in there. 
It's like, what is the two in the front yard and one in the rear yard? That is, that's a tree, that's a tree. Okay. So the two okay. Each one of the circles is a, is a tree. Mm -hmm. These circles are the ones that they want to take out. Clarify. The ones that they added after the fact are the larger circles, Correct. not the smaller circles. Correct. They had originally allocated the smaller circles. Mm -hmm. The larger circles is trees that they went in when this came to light. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I did the math here. I, I ask a math question and then I'm a mathematician. So I did the math question. They're, they're proposing two um, inch ornamentals at 192 for easy math, let's say 400. Two times 200 is 400 inches on the ornamentals. And they're proposing three times 255 for easy math, let's say 250, 750 um, for a total of 1150 inches, which is right on his 1149. If instead of putting in two inch trees and three inch trees, they put in three inch trees and four inch trees, one inch bigger on each of those kinds, they would keep the exact same number of trees, but increase the ornamentals by one inch and increase the canopy trees by one inch, they would be at 2200 and they don't need any relief. I got a quick question. What is the square footage on the house? Fifteen hundred. Uh, it varies. They're it's on average. They're what? built by rank. I'd say probably about sixteen to seventeen. So they're little. Average. They're little garden homes. Yeah, the two story. They're all okay. Two are they concerned about the pine trees in the back, like growing the roots, tearing up the concrete? What are they concerned about? In the back. Yeah. Some of these pine trees that are along the side and along the are they are they concerned about that at all? Like pine trees and the roots. And You're talking about the existing trees, yeah. or no? The, the, the ones you, you would plant. Oh no! In the back of the homes, yeah. We don't have any concrete back there. There's not a concrete pad in the back for for. It'll be safe distance away. Right. Yeah. Right. What's the lot size? Uh, individual lot size. We don't have individual no, lot size. It's, it's PD. It's all one big PD. lot. There's no individual. Uh, individual okay. Lots. No, no property line. No lot. They're all two story. Um, it just very slightly square footed by rank because you're built rank designated um, for military members. Well, and yeah, and going back to the math that Gretchen did for us, keep in mind if we as a board specify the number of inches that they need to put in, then it's up to them to determine how to do it, but this is, do it. Sim yep. this is simple math that says if they just increase their their specimens by one inch on each kind, they wouldn't need any relief. If we give them 20% right. relief, they, they can they, they can spread, they it, can out spread it out however they want, but it's easily doable simply by increasing by one inch. And the difference between a two inch, this is a two inch ornamental, and this is a three inch ornamental. Not that big a difference. We're not asking them to put a whole big old pine tree this big around in there. All right. Okay. Can I ask a quick question? You mentioned something at the beginning. Um, was I to understand that this is the first subdivision that this issue has come up for? Yes. So by giving a relief, are we setting a precedent for future subdivisions? No. It's in the bylaws for our, our goal. There is no setting of a precedent. Each case is divided, is determined on its individual case merits, and just because we granted one before does not give them the power to come in and say, you gave it to him, why won't you give it to me? By like token, they can't turn around and say, I had to do exactly everything you said and you helped this guy over here. So there's no precedent set by whatever we do. Now, if we do it multiple times, it's going to create the implication of that. That, that would be my concern is the, the, the tendency to get leniency here and then the, the continuation of that tendency in future subdivisions. And That's why I asked, was this only a rule for PDs or did it go for any development? But this rule applies to all developments. I have a question afterwards about IBD. Okay, does that answer your question about the setting an example or creating a precedent? Yes. Sir. Any other questions or discussions before I think we can start working on a motion? Anybody? I got a question. Okay. 
Carmel. Yes. Years ago, I did some legal work for Moody Family Housing. Where, that's, that's near the base. Did they have the same issues brought up about trees and all that when they did all that Moody Family Housing? That was the yeah. pre OTC. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're, we're encroaching in fresh ground. Yeah. We're about yeah. seven years. Sorry. Right. Right. We want to answer all questions we can for yes. you. Okay. Has anybody got an idea or want to put a proposal out there? I'll make a motion. Okay. I, I make a motion that we um, follow staff's recommendation of 20% relief um, with the condition that all of the trees be native to Georgia trees. They get to pick, they get to pick the what size they diameters. Mm -hmm. They just have to meet the number of inches. Right. I second the motion. I have motion on the floor from Ms. Portman. I have second from Mr. Alvarado. All and the motion is reduction of 20%, which means they will have to plant at least 1,754 inches of trees. They can pick the diameters, they can pick where they put them, but it has to be... And, and they can't all be ornamentals. Well, that's, that's specified in there, too. <laughs> do you want to make, do you want to amend it that they maintain the same percentage of ornamental to count? Yeah, is, do we have a rule about what kind? Then yes, I want to... That. I thought you already had in here that there was so many trees had to be ornamental and so many trees had to be counted. They, in their letter, Vincent. They put that they put in. That they not be less, that, that there not be an increase of ornamental trees. That it not be more than, uh, that's a, that, that, that it won't be more than 192 to 255 ornamentals to the county. They might end up putting in actually less trees, but the ratio can't change. Any other questions? Okay. So motion is on the floor for this four of them. Twenty percent reduction from what is required, which means they have to be <coughs> seventeen and hundred and fifty four inches minimum. The percentage of ornamental to canopy has to stay at least 192 to 255. You can put more canopies if you want, but you can't put any less. I figured the canopies would be better than yeah. the ornamental. So. Yeah. yeah, 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 they are. They, they're, so they we can put the more in. Okay, so, right. so we have both on the floor. With, and native to Georgia. With, native, native, with to Georgia. Native, to, native to Georgia and and, 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 and no eucalyptus. <laughs> mm. Come on. <laughs> 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 Can't be a native to Georgia, it's a GMO. Okay, we have motion on the floor. I have second still from Mr. Alvarado. Second. All in favor of the motion as presented and amended. Please raise a hand and hold it so we can count. Four, five, all opposed. We have five, one. We have five, one. Or passing. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Please see if you can't make that, that bird fly. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate your consideration and your time. Thank you. All right. Okay. Can I borrow some help? Yeah. Uh, we have approval of the minutes. I read through them, didn't see anything that jumped out. Anybody got any corrections or spellings or amendments or additions or deletions or anything? Can I get a motion to accept the minutes as presented? So moved. I have a motion to Dr. Howell to accept the minutes as presented. Second. Second. I have a second, Mr. Quarterman. All in favor, raise a hand. Good. Thank you very much. Minutes accepted. Any old business to talk about? Any new business to talk about? Any appointments coming up we need to talk about? I don't think we have anything um, as far as appointments coming up. So.
not from the county. Nothing juicy to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> no. I got nothing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and effort. We stand adjourned. Uh, I like those fast days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little contentious there, but Chris. Yeah. I broke your point, though. Just on the side. Do you know what I'm going to do? 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 Yeah, they have no real good infrastructure.